So I had a couple of questions during the break time. So if you have a question, it's okay to ask during the class too, because the other students can benefit from your question, right? So I'll just I'll answer the questions here. So somebody asked me what does it mean no balance or no limits? Okay? Balance is like this kind of thing, right? So if there's no balance in a company, it can mean that I'm making the decision, but nobody is checking, nobody is balancing against me. Okay? So I, I just make the decision myself, and there's no pushing back, no balance, okay? Or no limits. So we'll talk about later in the course, in week three and week four, or later, about making a system that can help us to balance or make limit in the company. Okay? Uh, usually we have corporate governance for system. In the video, they asked in the video what were they talking about. Mainly they were talking about this problem in the culture. Right? They were saying it was a people problem and explaining about the problems for the people. Okay? I had a question about the blackout. Like, for example, the Korean electricity provides electricity to the university, right? So imagine if Korean electricity cut the electricity one day, so suddenly all the lights go out, and then they tell the university, oh, there is some problem with providing the electricity. So you have to pay for the repair or the maintenance, okay? Or you have to pay more money for your bill so that we can make a better electricity service. Okay, then Suwon University says, okay, we'll pay more money. Okay? But it's not true. Just the company cut the electricity on purpose to make the university pay more money. Okay? And then, of course, when the electricity company shuts down, we could have some blackout problem. Okay? Uh, so, oh, somebody asked me about auditing. Arthur Anderson, what's their business? Audit means to, check, to look at the company's books. Look at the company's accounting. Wage is accounting, right? So, auditing means looking at all the books. Somebody has to check your books, right? You can't just give your book to the public. Look, here's my accounts, right? So, we have kind of balance, which is an outside company. Outside company comes in, and they look at your books. And they audit, it's called auditing, that's the verb. Okay? They audit your book and they find out if there's any problem. But these auditors can have many business. Sometimes they can be consultant, they can be accountant, they can be lawyers, they can have different types of business. Okay, so do we have any other question then? No? So then let's move on to talk about the subprime crisis. More recently, in the US, they had what they call the subprime mortgage crisis. <coughs> and this caused a kind of cause of global financial crisis in 2010, <coughs> 2008, right? So, what does the word subprime mean? What does prime mean? Important, prime, like high quality, right? So what does sub mean? More high quality or less high quality? Yes. Sub is below, right? So subprime is not the high quality. What? Mortgage loan. Do you understand mortgage loan? Yes. What is a mortgage loan? Loan for a house, right? So we're talking about a subprime mortgage. Let's look at an example. A uh, just a waiter in the U.S. Waiter does not get has an unstable income, right? Because of tips. Waiter can be earn below the minimum wage, and they get some tips. You understand tips? Yeah. Right. So they have an unstable income. So usually, waiter is not going to be the high quality mortgage. Okay. They are called subprime mortgage. It means that they are not 
who do you want to give a mortgage to, right? Somebody with a very stable income or not stable income? <coughs> stable income, you're sure they can pay you back, okay? So they're going to be prime mortgage. But subprime is people who don't have a very uh, stable income, okay? They were getting the mortgage in, uh, from the companies, okay? So, <coughs> Uh, let's look at the line. We start off with the uh, the person who owns the house, right? So we've got the house owner. They get the loan to buy the house. Then after, uh, we can see here on the Word document also, the home buyer. After the home buyer, we have the broker. Do you understand broker? What does broker mean? Commentator. Commentator. No? What is a broker? Intermediate three. Just meet, brings two people together. Broker bringing two people together. The broker had, broker helps the homeowner to get to the lender, right? The appraiser is also here, works with the broker. What does appraise mean? Evaluate something. So appraiser evaluates the value of the house. Okay? Appraiser comes and looks at the house and says, this house is worth $100,000. This house is worth $200,000. Right? So the broker helps the lender, the bank, right? Just normal buying, to lend money to the homeowner. Okay? And the appraiser figures out how much the house is worth. Then we have the investment bank. So this is the difference between the US and Canada. In Canada, the story finishes here, right? Okay, this is like a normal situation. Okay, the person gets the loan from the bank, the person pays back the loan to the bank. Okay, finished. But in the US, the bank can sell on the loan to the investment bank. The investment bank is a very big bank, right? Usually on Wall Street. Do you know Wall Street? Where is Wall Street? What city is it in? New York, right? In the US. The investment bank can then sell this onto investors. Usually in the form of a bond. They sell this onto bond investors. Okay? In between here, we have the rating agency. What does rating mean? If I give you a rating, what does it mean? Give you a score, right? Right to see how good it is. So the investment bank sells a bond to the bond investor, okay? And the rating agency gives a rating to the bond to say this bond is very good quality or not good quality or okay quality. So this is the investment bank makes a, a package, right? Do you understand my like package? Package in Korean? Yeah. yeah. Package? Hmm? Do you ever buy a package? <coughs> hmm? So the investment bank makes a package of what? Of loans. Okay? And they make that into a bond. And the investor buys the bond. Okay? So the bond is the investor buys the bond and they get paid 4% interest. So in reality, the investor is lending money to the homeowner. Right? But you have all these people in the middle. They're all intermediaries. Okay? So in the normal situation, it stops here. The bank is lending money to the homeowner. But in the subprime crisis, investors, maybe this, let's just say this investor, this guy is a waiter in, in the US, right? And this guy is a pensioner in Norway. Do you understand pensioner? How do you say pensioner in Korean? Pension, Yangum. Yangum. Pensioner is somebody who's getting their pension, right? So I'm a pensioner, I saved up all my money in Norway. I like eating fish because I live in Norway, right? And I think that uh, this is a good way to invest my money, very safe, right? 
buy the bond from the investment bank. The rating agency says it's very safe. Okay? Top rating. Okay? And I get paid, let's say, 4% a year. Okay? So I get my 4%. Let's say that I invest $100,000. And I'm going to get $4,000 a year. Okay? Then I get, whatever, $300 a month to spend, right? So I saved up this money, and now I invest in the bond for my retirement, okay? I expect to get this money every month. So the idea of all of these kind of things is that the idea is correct, right? We can make, this person can get a cheaper loan because we can match this person and this person, okay? This, if we just do with the bank, then uh, the bank maybe gives a high interest rate to the person, right? But if we can find a lot of investors, much more investors all around the world, then this person can get a lower interest rate. Do you understand that idea? The financial idea, right? Financial innovation, okay? So we get the access to the money of all the people in the world, then we can get lower interest rates here at the end for the homeowner. So better for the homeowner, right? But all these people in between, they all have, they all get fees. Okay? But it's still it's still cheaper, even though we pay the fees because we get the lower interest rate. Okay? You studied finance, it's the idea of diversification. The Norwegian investor is very well diversified, but this bank is not well diversified. So the bank has a high risk if the house price gets lower, but this guy doesn't have as high a risk because they invest in a lot of different areas. Okay? It's a financial idea. But we can see that there could be some problems along the way between the house owner and the pensioner in Norway. Okay? So this is what happened in the... Uh, in the crisis, okay? So first of all, let's, let's start the story here with what can go wrong, okay? So first of all, the broker is uh, matching the homeowner to the lender, okay? So the broker is getting paid a fee, the lender is going to pay a fee to the broker for finding the homeowner, right? So first of all, the broker is going to lie about the waiter's income, okay? Do you understand that problem? The broker just wants to get their fee from the lender. So they can lie about the income, okay? So for example, the waiter is making, this happened, right? The waiter is making just $20,000 a year, okay? But the broker says the waiter is making $80,000 a year. Okay? Big difference. And the broker verifies this to the lender. Okay? He says, oh, I checked everything. I checked all of the waiter's things. So maybe he found out that in one month, the waiter made a lot of tips. So he bases calculation just on this one month. And he makes this story that his income is very high. Okay? Then he calls the appraiser. And... The appraiser wants to get the fee. The broker pays the fee to the appraiser, right? So the appraiser looks at the house and he thinks, oh, the house is just worth $100,000, right? But the broker says, I want you to say the house is worth $150,000, okay? Now, the appraiser's name is Paul, okay? And he wants to get more business from the broker in future. He wants the broker to call him again the next time the broker has an appraisal. So what's he going to do? Say the real price of the house? Or say the price that the broker wants him to say? Which? Okay. Some people will say it doesn't matter real price. But some people will say it's a false price. Right? So the appraiser can give a false price for the house. So the appraiser tells the lender the house is worth 150000 So the lender thinks, I have a lot of collateral. Do you understand collateral? Collateral 
is when we make a loan, and if the person doesn't pay back the loan, then we get this, right? So if the house owner doesn't pay back the loan, the lender gets the house, right? So the appraiser told the lender the house is worth too much, it's not good, right? The lender thinks the house is worth more than this. Okay, then the lender, is the lender going to check all these things properly? Maybe in Canada, yes, because the lender is, is worried. If I don't pay, pay back, it's a problem, right? But in this case, the lender is selling on the loan to the Wall Street Bank, okay? So the loan doesn't get paid back, they don't actually lose, right? They already sold the loan to somebody else. They sold it to the investment bank, okay? And then the investment bank, the same situation. They sold the loan to the bond investor. So they're not going to lose. They already sold the loan, it's gone, okay? They get paid the fee and they get paid the fee. So they want more and more. More loans they can sell to the investment bank, the higher fees they get. The more loans they can sell to the pensioners, the higher fees they get. Okay? And then we have the rating agency. Now the pensioner is not stupid, right? They know that I don't know about these things, right? So who do they trust? They trust the rating company to check those things for them. Okay? So they trust because everybody, bond investor, doesn't have time to check all these things themselves, individually. So this company called a rating agency is going to check for them. And the rating agency gives a stamp, right? AAA. Top rating is AAA. Okay? Or it gives a stamp of B, say. B is very bad rating. Okay? Very risky. So the rating agency makes a rating based on the risk. Okay? Now the problem is, who pays the rating agency? The rating agency gets paid by investment bank, not by the investors. Okay? So the same problem as the appraiser. If the rating agency doesn't give the investment bank the rating, maybe the investment bank will call another rating agency. Do you understand the problem here? Yes, so the rating agency is getting their fees here. So they have some maybe some bias that they will give a good rating. In any case, the investment bank was making this package. They were taking all the top loans, right? 80% prime loans, and then put in like 10 or 20% subprime loans, right? Why? Just to pass, to barely pass the AA ranking, okay? So they were right on the line of the rating. They would talk with the rating agency and they would try to make it just on the line of getting the top rating. So they would add some subprime mortgage to every package, right? And then the pensioner trusts the rating agency. Okay, so does anybody know what happened? What happened in the subprime crisis? Hmm? Well, he couldn't pay back the loan, right? So, uh, then what happened? Who was in trouble? If this person can't pay back the loan, who's the person who's in trouble? No? The lender already sold that loan. They sold the loan to somebody else. They got their money finished. So the person at the end, right? The bond investors are in trouble. Okay? They're not going to get paid back this interest that they're expecting to get. Okay? So the waiter can't get pay back. They can't get paid back this interest. And the house price goes down, right? They can't get back the collateral, can't get back any money from that. So they're going to lose their money. So the problem is that people who owned a lot of these bonds were in trouble. And some banks, investment banks, also bought these bonds. One of them was called Lehman Brothers. Okay, and also Bear Steering Bank. So they they these two investment banks bought a lot of these bonds from the other banks and they were going to be bankrupt okay? because the bond couldn't be repaid okay? and other people also couldn't get repaid so this was the, the subprime uh, crisis so 
let's watch a little bit of a video. So can you turn off the light? <coughs> so this video is called the Inside Job. Have you heard of this video movie before? Do you know Matt Damon? Do you like Matt Damon? He's an actor from Boston in the US. So he narrates the movie made about the subprime mortgage crisis and the global financial crisis. Okay? So this is your homework to watch this movie, Inside Job. Okay? It's on the, do you have an OLA TV? <coughs> Maybe it costs Chun Wan, right? On the VOD, do you know the VOD? Yeah. yeah. Or else, maybe you can find online somewhere, right? Uh, <coughs> so this, let's look at the trailer, preview of the movie. about selling securities that your own people think are trash. Do you understand trash? <coughs> Rubbish. So he, some of these guys, this is called a security, bond or stock securities, right? So they were selling, he's blaming the investment bank for selling these securities that on their own emails, right? The email says that this is like trash, right? They know it's not going to be paid back. But they still sell to the bond investor, okay? So that kind of problem. This is a kind of the U.S. Senate. The government is asking. Is that bothering you as a hypothetical? No, this is real. <laughs> What do you think of Wall Street incomes these days? Excessive. By 1980. So this is big money that these guys are making, right? In the Wall Street. $87 million. When you have Six, he was making millions of dollars and thought it was because he was smart. Chuck Prince famously said, we have to dance until the music stops. Actually, music has stopped already when he said that. At some point, I used the word, I'm um, yeah. These people are risk takers, they're impulsive, they see a lot of cocaine use, prostitution. So these guys know that they were doing something dangerous? I think they did. Um, I don't hear confessions. What can we believe in? There's nothing we can trust anymore. We got a whole group of people looking at this for Excuse whatever reason. You can't be serious. If you would have looked, you would have found things. It's a Wall Street government. Why do you think there isn't a more systematic investigation being undertaken? Because then you'll find the culprits. I don't believe I have to discuss that with you. You come to us today telling us we're sorry, we won't do it again. Trust us. Well, I have some people in my constituency that actually robbed some of your banks. And they say the same thing. Well, he's comparing them to people who robbed the bank, right? I never heard him mention those things. So then, uh, let's watch just some clip. So this one is the rating agency. He's the managing director, former managing director, used to be the managing director of the rating agency. So their job is to give the correct rating to the bond. Stearns was rated triple A like a month before it went bankrupt. Uh tells him Bear Stearns was rated AAA a month before it went bankrupt. Okay? 
So they gave the rating of AAA, but the company went bankrupt one month later. So he's asking him about that. Uh, more likely A2. A2? Yeah. Okay. A2 is still not bankrupt. No, no, no. No, it's, it's a high investment grade, solid investment grade rating. Lehman Brothers, A2 within days of failing. Um, AIG, AA within days of being bailed out. So he's talking about other companies like Lehman Brothers and AIG also had very high rating within days before they were bankrupt. Um, uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac were AAA when they were rescued. Um, Citigroup, Merrill, all, all of them had investment grade ratings. How can that be? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> that's a good So he asked him why, or how can it be? He's not going to answer, right? Great question. At no point did the administration ever go to all of them. So that's the rating agency, okay? Uh, then this is actually, for example, this guy is a professor, right? We can see also he's writing some research. There's some problem here. Iceland's financial right. system. Right. Iceland is also an advanced country with excellent institutions, low corruption, rule of law. The economy has already adjusted to financial liberalization, while prudential regulation and supervision is generally quite strong. Yeah, and that was the mistake. It turns out that, uh, that the prudential regulation and supervision was not strong in Iceland. And so he made a report about Iceland. Right, he's a university professor in Colombia, and he said that the regulation and the law and supervision is very strong in Iceland. Okay, but who do you think paid him to make the report? He made a report saying that Iceland's supervision and regulation of their banks is very strong. Who do you think paid him to make the report? Have a guess. The Iceland government, right? Or Iceland banks, banks in Iceland, right? They paid the money for him and he made a report saying it's very good supervision and regulation. But Iceland had a big problem with the banks. All the banks went bankrupt, right? So what did you think that it was? I think that uh, you're going with the information you had and, and generally uh, the view was that, that, uh, that Iceland had very good institutions. It was a very advanced country. Who told you not, that? Who did, what kind of well, research did you do? You, do you talk to people? You have faith in, in uh, the central bank, which actually did fall down on the job. Uh, that uh, clearly it, this... Uh, Why do you uh, have faith in the central bank? Well, that faith, you, you, because you go with the information you have. How much were you paid to write it? I was paid, uh, I think the number was, uh, it's public information. So he got paid this much money to write some paper, right? $120,000 is a lot of money just for writing the paper, right? By the Icelandic Chamber of Commerce. Uh, under CV, the title of this report has been changed from financial stability in Iceland to financial instability. So he actually, the report said financial stability in Iceland, but now he has his CV, maybe he's embarrassed, so he changed it from stability to instability. So he was saying that uh, Iceland was very stable, finance, right? And then now he writes down that he was saying it was instable, right? So there is some problem also there in that kind of area where people, not just the rating agency, right? Other people apart from the rating agency write reports or make some report. Uh, <coughs> this is about the regulation and Wall Street government. Wow. I'm appointed to Wall Street greed and regulatory failures as examples of the need for change in America. So when Obama got elected, he said Wall Street is very greedy, right? One of the reasons he got elected. He talked about greed already. Okay. Act of oversight in Washington and on Wall Street is exactly what got us into this mess. So a lack of oversight. Do you understand oversight? Oversight, regulation, looking. Right? So he says there's a lack of oversight is why we got into the mess. After taking office, Obama spoke of the need to reform the financial industry. We want a systemic risk regulator, increased capital requirements. We need a consumer financial protection agency that we need to change Wall Street's culture. Said they need to change the culture of Wall Street, right, and also change the regulation. But in its first year, the Obama administration did not enact a single major financial reform. Addressing Obama and 
quote regulatory reform, my response, if it was one word, would be ha. Do you understand reform? Yay, yay, knock, reform? Is that correct? Right? So this guy is just laughing because Obama didn't make any reform on the rules. Okay? Even though before he got elected, he said we need to make a reform, right? On the oversight, but he didn't make much over reform. There's very little reform. How come? It's a Wall Street government. Well, that's, he said it's a Wall Street government. So it means that the government is too close to Wall Street. Okay? So there are a lot of people from the investment banks who work with the government, and the government points a lot of people in the investment bank. But I think a wider problem is that investment banks make a lot of money for the economy in the US right? and New York. They make a lot of money and they pay a lot of taxes. Okay? So people also, some people would say, we need greedy banks, right? The greedy banks are making our money, and then they're paying the taxes, right? So some people would even support that kind of uh, thing. So let's listen to the subprime mortgages. A friend of mine who was involved in a company that has a big financial presence said, well, it's about time you learned about subprime mortgages. So he set up a session with his trading desk and me. And, and the techie who, who did all this gets very excited, runs to his computer, pulls up in about three seconds this Goldman Sachs issue of securities. It was a complete disaster. Borrowers had borrowed on average 99.3% of the price of the house. Which so Goldman Sachs is an investment bank, right? And he's looking at what Goldman Sachs were doing. And he said the borrowers had borrowed 99% of the price of the house. So that's not very safe, right? They made a mortgage of 99% of the price of the house. So if I can't pay back, it's going to be they have no money in the house. If anything goes wrong, they're going to walk away from the mortgage. So if anything happens, they have no money in the house, just 1% in the house, right? So if there's a problem, they're just going to walk away. Give the keys back to the bank and say, uh, buy, right? Do you understand? They didn't invest much money, they just got a loan. 99% loan to buy the house. So now, the house price goes down, just give the key back to the bank. This is not a loan you really make, right? You've got to be crazy. But some... Well, he says you should be crazy to make this kind of loan. Now, you took 8,000 of these loans, and by the time the guys were done at Goldman Sachs and the rating agencies, two-thirds of the loans were rated AAA, which meant they were rated as safe as government securities. It, it's utterly mad. He thinks it's mad, right? That these loans were then rated between the investment bank and the rating agency, put together, and given a very high rating. Okay? They obviously were not, obviously were not uh, safe loans. Okay? So then let's uh, discuss about uh, this case of the subprime crisis. So first of all, I can turn back on the light again. Do you have any question about this situation? In the US? What is confusing? Almost. Do you want me to go back over this again? <laughs> hmm? And what part is confusing? It's okay to say it's confusing. Yes. You, can you direct me? Okay. Does anybody else have a question? <coughs> okay, so then uh, we're going to discuss about the ethical failures in the story of the subprime mortgage crisis. So we saw these people, the homeowner, the broker, the appraiser, the lender, the investment bank, the rating agency, and the bond investor, right? So the bond investor doesn't really have an ethical failure, right? They're going to be the victim, okay? The homeowner, not so much, right? You might say that the homeowner should know they don't have a stable income, right? But we're not, we're not going to focus on the homeowner, right? 
the intermediaries. So broker, appraiser, lender, investment bank, and rating agency. Okay? So I'll discuss with your partner. What was the ethical failure or ethical problem for each of these people? So what can those people do wrong? What could those people do? Bad things could those people do? From the broker to the rating agency. issue did the rating agency have? They didn't do their job properly? Yeah. Why not? Because they, even they, like, the banks are bankrupt like, a month ago, they just give them a trip. So we saw that even though the banks were bankrupt just a few days, right? Yeah. Later, they gave them a high rating. How, they asked them, how is it possible? Surely they must know the bank is going to be bankrupt in a few days. They must know something is wrong and they must reduce the rating to B or much lower, right? But they didn't, so the guy was just laughing, right? He, he couldn't answer the question. So they didn't check uh, properly, right? In any case, the rating is just opinion. The rating is just the opinion of that agency, right? About the risk. In this case, it's their opinion about the risk. So they made a mistake on the opinion. They're getting paid fees by the, by the 
investment bank, right? To do that. What about the investment bank? What is the ethical problem for the investment bank? We saw the US government were asking some question to the investment banker. What did the investment banks do wrong? Hiding information. Um, they were selling trash, right? Is one thing that they were hiding the information that it was trash, right? Do you understand trash? Hmm? Trash, garbage. <laughs> what do I mean by trash? Trash is a, a loan of 99% loan to somebody who doesn't have a stable income, right? Do you understand? Yes. Right, so selling trash is 99% loans to people without stable income. And they're pretending that it's, it, they're pretending that it's a good investment, right? They're selling this to the bond investors. So one guy was saying the rating agency don't check and the investment bank is also at fault. Okay? Because they can tell, they check in the investigation, the internal email, internal internal email of the investment bank. They can see the worker is saying, ha ha ha, this product is really trash. Ha ha. Let's sell it to all the grandmothers. Right? And then they catch the email afterwards, right? So it's hard for them to deny, right? <coughs> so then the lender, what did the lender do wrong? They sold the loan to the investment bank, right? So similar to an investment bank, right? They're also selling on these bad loans to the investment bank without checking. What about the appraiser? What are they doing wrong? Appraiser is deciding the value of the house. So what kind of things can they do wrong? Don't check properly. Don't check properly. Or in this case, even just give the false. They give a false value. Right? What about the broker? What was the broker doing wrong? Okay. Lying about the incomes, right? So we can see that we can have this kind of chain, right? They lie about the income, give the false value of the house. Okay? They give the trash loan here, very high 99% loan to the people without this kind of thing. They don't check. The investment bank, even though they know, the investment bank know these things, right? They know maybe they're lying about the incomes and they know that can be this problem, right? They still check, set, sell it on to the other person. Okay? So we saw that Obama again was talking about the culture of greed. What is driving all of these things? Fees. You understand fees? Yeah. I get paid more fees if I lie about the incomes. I get paid more fees if I give the false value of the house. I get paid more fees if I sell more loans. Okay, I get paid more fees if I don't check 100%. Okay? So we can have that kind of human failing also in the subprime mortgage crisis, which is a failing of greed and not doing things properly, selling things that they shouldn't be selling. Okay? So do you have any question about that? Problems? No? So then we saw here they were interviewing the guy about Iceland. So in Iceland, the banks also failed. Okay, the banks in Iceland took a lot of risk and they failed. Lehman Brothers failed, a very big investment bank. So what is similar to the question about Enron? What effect did the failure, did this problem have on the stakeholders and on society in general? Well, discuss with your partner. So you guys were here also for the financial crisis, right? So what effect 
did this kind of failing have on society? For other people. <coughs> last question is what do you think we can do to solve this kind of problem in Enron or in in we looked at today in in the subprime crisis okay. what is the way to solve this poor ethical behavior recently we saw in the financial industry another time we saw in Enron okay do you understand the question just your idea how can we solve this kind of problems we saw these ethical issues here and we saw the other ethical issues in in Enron. Okay, so I'll discuss with your partner. So this is also on the website now, right? This part. Okay, so then let's discuss the question. So first of all, what effect did these failures have on society? The subprime mortgage crisis in the US, what kind of effect did it have? It caused a global economic crisis, right? Because AIG, for example, AIG was uh, biggest insurer in the world. So if AIB was closed tomorrow, there would be no insurance for the airplanes or the ships. So you wouldn't be able to take a flight or you, the goods, the ship wouldn't be able to leave with all the goods on it, right? Because they have no insurance, so they wouldn't be able to go, right? So people lost their confidence and we had the global crisis. Who else was affected?
What about this person? People invested in bonds, right? Stock markets also went down a lot, so a lot of people lost their money in the stock market, especially the older people who saved up money for their pension. It means they had to go back working again for five more years or four more years, right, to save more money uh, because their investments was failed, right? Then what's a, what, how do you think we can solve this problem? about this kind of poor ethical behavior. How can we solve this kind of problem? Strong, more regulation, like Obama said, reform. Regulation reform, right? So we can see these days in the US election some popular candidates is Donald Trump or Bernard Sanders, who are, Bernie Sanders says that he accepts no Wall Street money, for example, for his campaign, and Donald Trump doesn't accept money from any business, right? He just uses his own money. So that's one reason why those candidates are popular, right? Because we saw in this video that the guy said with Obama, he didn't make many reforms, so the people weren't very happy, right? Because he didn't change the laws. So law is one way, right? What's another way? Apart from the law, what's another way? <coughs> what else can we change? We don't. Apart from the law, is law the only way we can do things? Using law? Is there another way? Do people only behave well because they get punishment? Education, ethics. ethics, so educate people to be more ethical, right? Culture, they mentioned the culture as well, try to change the culture in the organizations, right? To get a better culture, not just people acting just for greed in the organization, right? So inside the organization we can make some systems. So we'll talk about that in the next uh, few weeks. So then let's finish there for today. Thank <laughs> you.